Okay, so recently we had a webinar with the team from Glint about unifying communities and education. Um, and we thought that we would take a few minutes to answer some of the questions that came in during that webinar that we didn't get to talk about live on the call. Um, so I'm Linda Schwaber Cohen from Skilljar, and I'm joined here with by Remco. You want to introduce yourself, Remco? Um, well, I'm Remco, uh, and I'm, I work for Insider. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, and actually, it's good to know that Incited recently released an integration with Skilljar. Um, you want to... Super exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. Do you want to just talk a little bit about what that integration does? Yeah, so it enables customers uh, or prospects, as we'll cover later in the, in the questions, uh, to find either community user-generated content, uh, but also courses and learning materials in the community itself, um, just by doing the same search they would normally do. Basically reinforcing sort of the idea that you don't need to go to a different platform to find whatever you might need. I love that. Awesome, let's get into the questions. So the first question yes. is, are you using gamification like ranks or badges to increase the engagement of your customers? It's a cool question. I think this was asked a couple of times actually. So I'll lead with the community uh, answer. So for community, obviously, I think as anyone would expect, gamification is super important. Um, there are a couple of use cases. I'll just cover a few, but the main use case obviously uh, for a lot of users is to show expertise. It's kind of like a status play. So you answer a lot of questions about iPhones and users will mark your answers as the best answers, which will at some point elevate you to be the iPhone expert, for example, uh, which works really well. Um, and another use case could be, for example, um, that you help stimulate engagement by tying this gamification into a ranking system or points, as some of our customers do. Uh, which means that giving a correct answer to a question or submitting product feedback that actually gets picked up by the team or something else will gain you points. Uh, and that could gain you either new ranks or could, uh, for example, be tied into swag distribution or other type rewards, um, which is super important to sort of keep the community running, right? Stimulate that engagement and make sure that people start and just continue to engage and answer each other's questions and help each other out. Uh, super important. For sure. And one thing I see a lot of our customers doing that I love in terms of integrating communities and education um, that relates to gamification is feeding training data into the community gamification model. So rather than having two separate gamification models happening, you, let's say, add a trigger to let the community know anytime somebody's completed a course in training and add those points to whatever their ranking might be. Yeah. In, in the community. Within training itself, I do like things like knowledge checks where people can get points and see how they how they did and if they learned. Um, and there's a lot of badging, of course, in training. I personally believe that badging should really be tied to a credential. So if you earn a badge yeah. based on learning something um, when it comes to training rather than just um, taking three courses or making a purchase, um, those things I think are less valuable in terms of really driving meaningful education. Um, so I prefer yeah. the gamification and community and use training to feed into that community. Yeah, exactly. I think one thing that I forgot to mention, which is especially powerful is you, for example, have a community wide leaderboard that will show uh, where you rank compared to like the number one or the number two person that is answering all the questions right before you. And you can try and be faster and earn more points and that type of stuff. Um, I think that would be super cool uh, to implement and also use learning data in, for example, to really signify what it means to be an expert and show it on, on a, on a yeah, community or learning type platform wide scale. Yeah. And it's unlikely that all of your customers are going to want to engage in the leaderboard necessarily, but there's going no. to be enough of them usually that are, that are yeah. excited about it. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Internally here, it's actually a battle within our own community. There's the community managers here. They absolutely go crazy over gaining points and switching out ranks. Basically, it's a, it's a thing on Slack. It will turn into a battle. 
I'm sure. I'm sure being the community platform. Um, we got another question about how users are incentivized. Um, and I think it related to a few different things, both customers just generally engaging, but also some of these customer ambassadors um, that might have more of a role to play in community. Um, you want to talk a little bit about incentives? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we were discussing this a little bit earlier. So no money, or at least I haven't seen an example where people are incentivized by um, actually earning money doing work at community, besides maybe actual employed community managers, I guess. Um, but as we were discussing this earlier, we sort of referenced the SAPS model, um, which I think is a brilliant model to sort of explain this question. Do you want to do the explanation about SAPS or should I? Sure. So when we think about SAPS, SAPS stands for status, access, power, and stuff. And it's really a pyramid. So when you think about stuff, it's the most expensive thing you can give to a customer. It's also the least value. But on the top of the pyramid is status, which is the most valued. And that might be like the badge that you were talking about, Remco, when somebody's considered yeah. an expert. And or Salesforce is a brilliant like MVP program, for example, and there's a very small number of MVPs and they're very well respected in the Salesforce community. And that's a great example of providing status to people who are truly contributing. And yeah. um, so within that pyramid, there's lots of different ways to incentivize, but actually stuff is usually the least valued by your user. Yeah. <laughs> the easiest to give out, so. Yeah, you would expect it the other way around, right? Yeah. But um, I, especially access and power in community world, I think are super interesting because we see some of our customers, for example, at a certain rank or when you're a heavy user of a certain feature, they'll, for example, give that user access to a beta part or a beta forum uh, where they can get the latest update on that feature and actually test it and provide feedback. And that feedback will then be taken into account into development. So I think that's super valuable. Uh, in terms of yeah, customer engagement, I guess, in this, in this case. And the last one is power. We see it a little bit less, but sometimes uh, this also happens that a user is so good, knows so much about the platform, uh, is answering so many questions, is mega, mega expert status, and they'll give these users mod-like capabilities. So they'll be like a moderator, but a light version and can do some sort of stuff and move topics or posts around or yeah, moderate a little bit, um, which I guess is like the ultimate sort of reward on a community, right? If you're, yeah, if you're not employed by the company itself. Totally. And um, great, let's move on to our next question. This one's about c competitors. Always interesting Ooh. when it comes to putting out information on the internet. Um, so the question was, are you worried about competitors getting into your community and training with public access? Um, so I think it's a hard decision what you gate and what you keep public. But one thing that I always keep in mind is that your customers, when they're looking for information, are usually looking on Google first. So that's the easiest way to find what we're looking for. That's what I think the modern worker is trained to do is search Google. And if you gate your content, then you're losing that benefit of, of giving access to people who are searching on Google. The other thing I'll say is that competitors find your stuff either way. So regardless of whether you're providing true access to it, if, if it's just a matter of competitors gaining information about your product, let's say, or your services, that kind of thing, competitors tend to figure out in a variety of different ways, whether it's a customer who's interested in your competitor and is giving them information or mystery shopping or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. So I usually don't truly think of that as a high risk unless it's highly proprietary information, in which case, of course, you need to gate it. And, and I think it depends on the, on the piece of content, but as a whole and as a rule, I think resources should be public. Fully 100% agree. Uh, in community world, we always advocate being open about everything, and this includes your platform, uh, unless you really, really can't do that. Obviously, there are edge cases. But yeah, I think in general, it helps sort of show leadership or thought leadership around a certain subject, especially around your, your, yeah, your software and the market you play in. 
Um, but it also, on a lower level, shows how you deal with customers, right? How you engage with them uh, and how customers engage with other customers and what type of information is shared and best practices, uh, which I think is super valuable to anyone, especially also prospects, for example. I would definitely also... We have a lot of prospects that actually pre-register on our own community before they actually engage with our sales team, for example. Um, so I think that's super valuable. And obviously, there are cases where you'd want to gate some stuff so we have customers that do beta forums and beta groups on their forums um, and obviously with a new feature coming in and it not being fully tested or developed yet you'd want to gate that sort of stuff so they'll create a user group and only invite a few people and that will be invisible to the rest uh, very much possible but in general keep it open always the best thing yeah, definitely. And same, same with skill jar and training, you can choose to restrict access to certain groups of users. So if you wanted to say only customers get access to a certain thing, or maybe it's paid training, and only people who have paid get access to a specific thing, then you could keep that private, um, especially if you're charging for it, because then obviously you're not going to let everybody see it for free. No. Um, <laughs> But you can let people see the metadata. So you can let people see information about the course and that can be indexed on Google, for example. Then they can find it, buy it, and get full access. True, very true. Um, and that relates to this question about do you only allow customers to be part of the community or also non-customers? And one thing I thought was really interesting, Remco, that you just said was about prospects using your community. And we see that for training all the time as, as training being actually a lead gen mechanism um, yeah. do you see customers ever looking at community in terms of attributing leads to community yeah sometimes so we we have seen some cases where they would for example ask a few product questions on the community which would then get answered and then after a couple of days we would see a demo request come in and we'd know that they pre-registered on the community for example so I think that's super cool. We also sometimes see cases where prospects register on the community and start engaging with, for example, feature updates or roadmap updates before they actually come into the sales team, which I think is a bit of a harder case. I'm not really sure if that's the best way to start up a prospect relationship, but yeah, in general, uh, it does happen. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And I think it's really cool to see when it actually does happen. It's true because prospects are engaging with your product before they talk to your sales team all the time. They want yeah. to they want to see if it's worth their time to engage with you. So I think that's yeah. a really fair point. And that relates to training completely as well. Um, people also do industry training that is often open to non-customers. So things that are not product specific, yeah. but rather how to do a job better. Um, and that oh, is- Yeah, I would definitely open those. Yeah a huge yeah. gen piece as well. And, and it helps expand the value of your training program to the organization. Yeah. Last question. Do you find there's a lot of overlap between the communities and training? So do people have conversations about training courses in the community to help, let's say, solidify concepts or provide real life examples? What do you see, Ronco? Yeah. Yeah, so starting off from a community perspective, I don't think we see a ton of overlap, uh, typically. Um, what we can see on community is that certain lightweight training or instruction can sometimes simply be an article on the community. Um, so yeah, the most simple, uh, easy example I usually give is that every community from every single customer that we have will usually have an instruction on how to reset your password if you've lost it for that type of software. This can, you can also see this type of stuff in help centers, but it's mostly on communities as well. Uh, and there are a few other cases that you can just see like a quick instruction. This is what you do when you run into this, or this is what you do when you're trying to find feature X uh, that will be shared there, but no bigger training uh, around capabilities or product features or that type of stuff. We usually don't see that on our community. Yeah, and I think community is really valuable when it comes to getting people to understand what training you have to offer. Um, a good training system will let you deep link to a specific course or lesson. So if there's a yeah. conversation happening in the community, you can say, actually, we have a great training about this. Why don't you hop in here and you can learn more? Or if you have a new training course out, you can advertise that training course in a, in a post on the community and, and, and funnel people into training. I don't really like the idea of customers having to know where everything is found across no. 
all the different properties that you might maintain as a customer success or enablement organization. So it's nice to be able to, to create that funnel for people. Um, exactly. And, sometimes yeah, and you also don't want to duplicate stuff uh, or have it in different channels, in different formats. It's all very, very difficult and very hard to manage as well. Um, so deep linking, integrating, the federated search thing we just explained, so much, so much better. Yeah, in terms of that unification experience. And granted, yeah. not everybody can completely unify, and that's a journey, and, and helping yeah, yeah. customers find resources is a journey, but it, it it's really easy to do if you truly think about it, especially with all of these deep links available. Um, in terms of post-training engagement, so that was one of the questions. Do people solidify concepts or provide real-life examples? I think sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's that? Yeah. we sometimes, yeah, it's, it's possible. You see this happen sometimes that, for example, you've had a training um, with uh, a few companies, let's say five for this example, for example, and one of the companies has been really vocal about best practices and trying to guide the other companies through and sh coming up with real life examples. You'll sometimes see that people then start engaging on the community after training, post training and stay in touch, which is what we want, right? We want customers to stay engaged with each other. That's where the biggest value in terms of best practices and how they actually use your software come from. So, um, yeah, we'll sometimes see that happen. And when that happens, it's be yeah, it's beautiful. You, it, and we hope it happens more. It's awesome. Agreed. Agreed. Great. Well, that's all we have. Thank you for your time and watching this today. Uh, Remco, it was great chatting with you. Thanks for yeah. having fun. <laughs> this is cool. We should do this more often after webinars. Like these are the questions we didn't get to. Let's do a video and, and get them sorted. It's awesome. Great. It was great seeing you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.